Did you know, folks, that the number of hydrogen atoms in a single water molecule exceeds the number of stars in the solar system? Hello, everyone. While you ponder that, I'd like to invite you all to an intriguing experiment. Today, we'll be touring the solar system, exploring whether one could survive for a minute on each planet. Yes, folks, this is Topaz. No spacesuits required. Our spaceship is cozy, comfortable, and safe. Let's get started, shall we? The Sun Of course, the Sun isn't a planet, but for convenience, let's start our journey here. For all the travelers who have decided to spend their vacation on this star, I have two announcements. There's good news and there's bad news. Let's start with the good news. Former NASA engineer turned cartoonist Randall Monroe believes that such a journey is entirely feasible for short durations. Let's say you all just took a quick jaunt to the sun's edge for just a nanosecond and then returned to Earth. In that case, the journey to the cozy region known as the chromosphere at a toasty 5,500 degrees Celsius would be challenging but should be successful. Of course, even if you caught a glimpse of the sun during that one nanosecond trip, your eyes and brain wouldn't register it until 30 milliseconds after returning to Earth. The heat you'd experience from the sun during that one nanosecond would be several orders of magnitude weaker than the heat from a butane lighter flame touched for one second. So that was the good news. Now, the bad news is that you can't stay at the sun for even one nanosecond. Everything, including the spaceship and its contents, would vaporize on approach to the cozy spots in the chromosphere. This is because the temperature of the solar corona ranges from 1 to 2 million degrees Celsius. It's a deadly grill, isn't it? Mercury Mercury, the first planet in the solar system, boasts an extremely tenuous atmosphere, intense solar radiation, and a temperature ranging from a blistering minus 180 degrees Celsius to a scorching plus 430 degrees Celsius. However, it does have a surface comprised of rocks. Could it be possible to enjoy oneself here? At least, could one find a somewhat comfortable spot near the Terminator? the boundary between the lit and unlit portions. On this planet closest to the sun, could one spend even a single day of vacation? Ah, indeed, this is a crucial question. This is because Mercury rotates slowly, with one day-night cycle lasting a whopping 176 Earth days. Well then, let's stay here for as long as possible. We could endure as far as we can without oxygen. That's roughly about two minutes. Considering there are worse places in the universe, it's not too bad, right? Venus Venus, the second planet in the solar system, is the hottest planet in the solar system. The temperature on this planet reaches a scorching 464 degrees Celsius. If you've ever been inside a greenhouse, you might understand why Venus is hotter than Mercury. It's because of the dense atmosphere of carbon dioxide, with layers of sulfuric acid, sulfur gas, and chlorine clouds, creating a greenhouse effect. Moreover, Venus has extremely high pressure, 92 times that of Earth's. On Earth, you would experience similar pressure diving down to a depth of 900 meters in the ocean. However, it's probably best to avoid doing so without a submarine. In fact, it's probably best to avoid Venus altogether. On the surface of Venus, humans would be crushed, burned, and simultaneously dissolved by sulfuric acid rain. It's impossible to withstand for even a second. The Earth The third planet in the solar system, Earth, could be said to have been precisely crafted for humanity. In most places on Earth, it's entirely possible to spend more than a day, and there are plenty of places where you'd want to stay even longer. How happy and comfortable it is? Well, isn't it more of a philosophical question by now? Furthermore, 
a French woman named Jean-Louise Calment reportedly lived for 122 years and 164 days on Earth. By the way, this is a world record. Mars In the search for suitable locations for colonies beyond Earth, Mars stands out as a prime focus of human attention. This is partly influenced by the fascination with Martians that was popular a hundred years ago. Additionally, another reason we turn our attention to Mars is its relatively comfortable temperatures, ranging from minus 110 degrees to plus 35 degrees Celsius. While it's not quite the beaches of Bali, it's considerably more comfortable compared to other planets. Could one spend a day here? The answer is unfortunately no. Mars has hardly any atmosphere, with just a thin veil of carbon dioxide. And it's not just the lack of oxygen that's a problem. Even if you had an oxygen tank, your bodily fluids would boil, rendering it rather ineffective. The atmospheric pressure on Mars is less than one kilopascal. At this pressure, the boiling point of water is much lower than body temperature, causing tears, saliva, and sweat to boil instantly. As humans begin to experience shortness of breath, symptoms of hypercapnia or carbon dioxide poisoning also emerge. Humans quickly lose consciousness, and their cardiovascular systems cease to function. Therefore, without specialized equipment to maintain pressure, one can only survive on Mars for a maximum of 90 seconds. Is it not imperative for us to ponder whether we truly must journey to Mars, Mr. Elon Musk? Jupiter While the planets we've seen so far in the solar system at least had solid surfaces beneath our feet, Jupiter marks the beginning of a world of giant gas planets. The journey here is akin to an endless freefall, continuing until one is crushed by immense pressure. And it's no wonder. Jupiter, with 318 times the mass of Earth, is the heaviest planet in the solar system. Furthermore, this massive body rotates at an incredibly fast pace, with a day lasting only about 10 hours. Though much shorter than Mercury's day, there's no luxury of walking with stones underfoot. To truly feel Jupiter's gravity, one must venture closer. First, one must pass through the radiation belts, which is no small feat. For instance, the probe Galileo encountered radiation levels exceeding 25 times the lethal dose for humans during its approach to Jupiter. In other words, only with robust radiation shielding can humans reach Jupiter alive. But assuming miraculously overcoming the hurdles of radiation and gravity, earthly life plunges into an atmosphere composed of hydrogen and helium. Here, winds blow hundreds of meters per second, while the temperature at the upper edge of the atmosphere reaches around 700 degrees Celsius, as one descends, it drops to minus 150 degrees Celsius before rising again to 190 degrees Celsius. The probe Galileo was destroyed at an altitude of minus 132 kilometers at a pressure of one bar. Of course, humans cannot reach here. Indeed, if one were to fall into Jupiter, their lifespan would be less than a second. According to Dr. Jennifer Glass of the Georgia Institute of Technology, in such a scenario, humans would meet a relatively painless end. Unlike Venus or Mars, Jupiter's atmosphere contains hardly any carbon dioxide. Therefore, there's no risk of succumbing to hypercapnia before losing consciousness, simply slipping into unconsciousness while descending deeper into the atmosphere. However, even if humans miraculously reached Jupiter's core, they would feel as if 160,000 cars were stacked on top of them. The subject would feel nothing, meeting their end in an instant. Saturn, Uranus, Neptune What applies to Jupiter also applies to Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Regardless of which giant gas planet one may journey to, humans would barely survive for less than a second, making the venture inherently reckless. Perhaps humanity should consider directing its gaze towards the moons of Jupiter and Saturn instead. There, 
the conditions for the evolution of life may be present. Examples include Ganymede, Enceladus, Europa, and Titan. While it may not be comfortable without specialized equipment, there is a chance of survival. Perhaps in the distant future, one of these moons may become a second home for Earthlings. With that, today's video comes to an end. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Also, be sure to share this video on social media so that our distant descendants can stay updated on the latest news from space. Well then, it's time to say goodbye for now. Until next time everyone, goodbye.